Well, that thing about the, the run of the school bus. Oh, I actually uh, really still still feel the spirit from that right now. It's, uh, it's a pretty, pretty powerful thing. And how God uses symbolic things, doesn't he? Um, to uh, convey a message to us. Uh, things in the natural and everywhere. God uses those things to speak to us. So be watching all around about you. No matter what's going on, be seeing that God is in the middle of it and God is speaking. Um, I know often we're probably all the same when we see a big rainbow, don't we? We, we just immediately get the message um, and how they appear sometimes in the most needed times to remind us that God keeps his promises. And uh, I really feel that we're going to see that this year. We're going to see God coming through that's the way to say it. God fulfilling his promises um, to us. Some from which we've been sitting on and praying about for many, many years. But let's first up, let's just uh, invite the Spirit of God to really open up our hearts. Eh? Um, I really feel the Spirit in my heart right now. So, Lord God, we just thank you because what we need is you, Lord God. We need is you. We need more of you, Lord oh God. And as we start this 2023, Lord, we just uh, want to make it all about you. And even this morning, Lord, your your words, Lord, your your scriptures. It's all about you, Lord. And that's what we want to do this morning. We want to receive you, more of you, into our hearts and our minds. So just. Pray with me and sit for a moment in the presence of God. Because, you know, I still believe that one, one day, one morning, whenever it is, the Spirit's going to fall upon us and we won't even be able to speak. I don't believe it. It'll be so, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence here this morning. Thank you. Thank you for... The rug, the metaphor of the rug, your precious blood, your love for us, you rescue us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come and fall upon us this morning. We welcome you. Come and open us up, open us up to your fire, to your word. Thank you. In every heart, Lord, today that's here, and even those of us who are not here, Lord, we pray. Release your spirit, we pray. Come and release yourself. Build us up in you, Lord, today. Thank you, Lord. Build us up in you. Oh, we love you, Lord. We bless you. I'm so grateful that you're with us. You're with us, Lord God. Rain down yourself upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rain down yourself. Thank you, Lord. Flow, we pray. Flow in each of us to here today. Flow in us, Lord. Revive our spirits, Lord. Today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you. Yes, bless you. Just drink in the Spirit of God this morning. Drink in.
Lord, we thank you for that. adding weight, weight and power to your word today, Lord God. Add the weight of your glory to your word today. We ask so that it pierces into our hearts, Lord, and revives us and lifts us up and gives us life for this year. This 23 Lord we need new life for this year and we thank you Father that your words will give us life throughout this year whatever it may bring thank you thank you thank you mm. bless the Lord Amen Amen isn't it good to uh, just give time to the Spirit of God to come and touch our hearts. I'm just going to keep on practicing that. <laughs> we really are going to keep on practicing letting the Spirit have His way with us. It's really important, isn't it? We're rushing around, we've got our plans, we've got everything worked out, but we just need to be still. Let the Spirit of God moving in our hearts. Yeah. It's funny the other the other day I was um, it was a yeah a bit of an interesting bit of an interesting day and uh, to say the least and then, and then I had uh, I had my brother text me I was just going home and I was thinking I'm, I'm pretty weary I need to sit quietly and rest you know and my brother texts me. And um, just a little backside story, I borrowed his ride on mower to mow out a couple of acres up there because mine was broken. And uh, he's texting me saying, the mower won't work properly, the mower won't work, you know. And I'm sitting there going, oh Lord, that's the last thing I need is to have to go and fix the mower, you know. And um, so I'm just driving on, starting to prepare myself, thinking, you know, I'll have to grab this and grab that and I'll go out there and have a look at it out to the little river. And uh, I said, oh, Lord, well, that's the last thing I feel like doing right now. And my brother said, oh, I've tried it twice and it just won't mow properly. It's nearly a brand new mower. Like, you know, it's not very old. Five grains worth of mow or something. And um, so I texted him one thing and said, just try, you know, get in the grass here with the pulleys and that. He said, oh, I've tried that. And then I thought, well, I'm just going to pray, God, will you just make this thing work? Will you just make this mower work? Because I just do not want to go out there and fix it, you know? And within about, two, oh, I don't know, I don't know how long it was, but it wasn't that long, I get a text back. I've tried it for the third time, and it's working perfectly. <laughs> praise God. And I said, praise you, God. <coughs> praise you, God. You, can even, you, you fix mowers even for me. I thought, wow. How good are you, God? That's, that's pretty incredible. So... It's been such a start to the year. Who's had such an interesting start to the year? I use the word interesting so I don't bore you with all the stories. And that's what we do, don't we, in Western society and Western church. <laughs> but wow, what an interesting start to the year. I didn't expect it to be like it is. And yet we didn't expect the other few years um, to uh, be like they were either, too. Are my batteries dying or something? Or what? No, my batteries just turned it down. Okay. And yet, um, God has had to speak to us so much, hasn't he? Um, last year, as we finished off last year, remember the, the verse for last year was arise and shine, um, for your light has come. And, and God's calling the church to arise, to break out of the apathy and, uh, 
and everything that's been over the Western church, the, the veil over our minds even, the fear of man that's been over, over the church in a number of years. God's calling us to break out of that stuff and to rise up in Him. And He's doing it. He's doing it. But it isn't easy. It isn't easy. It's, uh, it's a turnaround that's going to happen, and it is happening, but it isn't easy. You know, the other day we watched, uh, we watched The Spirit of Tasmania. Have you, have you seen it coming out? Um, and it backs out, and then it does, a, does this a fantastic spin around like that, and then poof, off it goes out to Tassie. And you know, some of those cruise ships, like, they're pretty hard to turn around, but that thing can just turn around on a dime. It's amazing. <laughs> God's turning the church around. He, he really is. But he's starting at the foundations. It's not going to be quick like the Spirit turning around there at the moment. Because this, this is a swing around that's taking time. You know? Because I know, I know that I know in my spirit that over these next few years, that to the end of this decade, this next seven years, we've got seven years before the end of this decade, there's something about these years leading up to the end of the decade that's going to be a wild ride. I tell you now, it's going to be a wild ride. Okay? We're, we're going to have to walk through some stuff, and this is why God's been trying to get the church as foundational trust in Him up to a level where it needs to be, to be able to walk through these next number of years. If you look at what's going on around the world, you can't put your head in the sand. You really can't. And I'm not going to list off all the things, but you can, you can just see the videos on, on YouTube and everything else. Um, the, I think 86% of uh, financial institutions are predicting a financial crash this year. This is secular. This is secular. They're all saying it's going to crash. Um, if you listen to all of the stuff that's set up there, some of which is so factual, you can't hide your head in the sand. And yet we're not looking at that. We're aware of it. We know that times ahead are going to be very challenging in the natural. But we're not looking at that. We're not focusing on that. We're making it all about Him. And this is where the church has got, is being changed, again, at the foundational level. God is changing the church. And on a lot of those foundational levels, areas, I should say, maybe, are very basic. Very basic. You know, if, if you go to solve a problem, and, and many people, I suppose I come from a mechanical background, but whatever problem you solve, whatever it might be, usually the answer is simple, isn't it? And it's basic. Sporting analogies, you know, that's a great analogy, isn't it? If they're not performing well, what do they do? They go back to the very simple basics and do those well. And they build on that. God, God is building us on a foundation that is being strengthened in the, in the very simple, basic areas. Because that's where we slip away. And that's where we fall. Because it's so simple, we don't always see what's going on. You know, in the church, we've, in, the, in past years, we've, people have had good intentions, but the whole thing years ago about the seeker sensitive, oh, let's just take all the crosses out, let's make the lights and everything, and let's try and make it look good for everybody, look good to the world. All good intentions, but, but you know, it just slipped us away into looking like the world, actually, and becoming like the world, accidentally. And so it's in the little things that we don't see. And in this next seven years, God's raising us. He's building up the church to make us strong in those basic areas where we have slipped. You could see it in the last few years when, when the COVID thing hit. The people that let fear come in, and we're all prone to it. Hey, you know, not criticizing, we're all prone to it. But, but just as a fact, the fear that come in. Do you remember at the very beginning of it? I remember at the beginning of it when suddenly I had this attack of fear and I thought, Lord, what am I doing? And I, and I thought, oh, I'm listening to man. I'm listening to man. And when I got my eyes and my ears off man, 
I was able to walk past the fear and walk in trust. And that's what God wanted to do, is to increase our trust level in Him. And we were tested, weren't we? And we need to be tested. In this next seven years, we're going to be tested. But I hope and pray that we've been through enough to be able to grow through this next number of years. And not only grow, but to rise and shine. To show the world that God is real. God is powerful. He's the one who never changes. Everything's going to change. They've got, the, they've got the Bitcoin, the cryptocurrencies ready to come in. It's already planned out. They've already researched it. That, if you want to use that one, but there's so many other things I could talk about. It's all in place. The great reset's in place. But our focus is about making it all about Him. Getting our eyes onto Him. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? Sounds like a spiritual cliche. And yet it's not. Yet it's the most powerful thing we can do is to get our focus completely upon Him. I, I used to get up in the morning and turn the news on. You know, after I'd done my quiet time, but I'd still go in. Sometimes I'd do it quickly before and watch the news. I don't do it anymore. I don't look at it. I look at enough to make myself aware because I want to listen to him. I want to be in that place where I'm going to hear and make it all about him. You know, what God's asking us to do is to completely consecrate ourselves. Remember last year we talked about the primary thing that we can do is to love God with all of our hearts and minds. That's everything. That's the consecration of everything. And you know, every time I think about that, I think, oh, people have heard that said so many times, God. And yet I don't think we have, we have grasped how much we need to move closer to Him. I don't think we've grasped it. I don't think we realise how much the world has got into our thinking. God's dealing with that right now through the work of the Spirit in our lives as, as we're open, as we're ready. He wants the lies and the, and the lust of the world to get out of, our, out of the church right now. Out of the church. He's calling us to a closeness with Him and a walk in the Spirit that we've only longed for. He's, he's, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. <coughs> As we're willing. As we're willing. What, what, what he needs, all he needs from us to start with is our willingness. Our willingness to let him move, let him work. Let him speak to us. Let him show us those things that, that need his touch. And most of all, to walk in that obedience. Willingness and obedience. So, so vital. I pray that our ears aren't deaf to the Spirit of God now. You know? I pray that our ears aren't deaf. Because we've heard some of these words said so many times before, and yet there's a new weight upon what God's saying. There's a weight coming on the Word of God. It's going to impact the church. I, I've seen in the past times when just a verse was spoken, just a vision I got, a verse was spoken and everybody was on their knees. The weight of the Word of God. This is what is coming to those who will shun the world and give everything over to what God is asking them to do. You'll only have to speak a word and God will, be, will follow it. You'll empower it. This is what we're, we're believing for. This is what I believe will happen for sure. See, when you see the world praying like it is right now, there's never been more prayer than what is happening around the world right now. It's, everyone, everyone pretty much agrees. There's never been more prayer in Australia than what we're seeing right now. It's, it's awesome. And do we really believe that God's going to be silent? 
He's going to answer those prayers. He's going to move greatly. And he's going to do something that we're going to talk about in a minute. What, ha what happened to me at the, the start of the year? I usually sit down and I start to ask God and say, well, you know, what are you, what are you saying for the year? And what's happening, God? And I'd love to do that. And I had a bit of difficulty this year because I had family staying with us, with four grandchildren and all the others that kept visiting all the time. And I didn't have a study to hide in. <laughs> so I had to hide up in the bedroom, you know, at the front of the house. And then the kids come knocking on the door. <laughs> but I managed to do some readings. And, and you know what? God, he just attracted my attention to Nehemiah, the story of Nehemiah. And you're probably like me. Did you really? Do you love the story of Nehemiah? I, I love the story of Nehemiah. It's so beautiful, isn't it? It's absolutely incredible. And I started looking at it, and, I, and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm so drawn to this guy. What are you saying to me? And because of all the stuff that was going on and, and other things, you know, I, I would I could only get a chance to pray every now and again about it. And I, I asked God. And, and I said, what are, you, what are you talking about, God? And then the word building came to me. I thought, building? Okay, building, building, building. Okay. What are you meaning building, Lord? I know it's about the wall, but what does building the wall represent? You know? What are you saying for this year about building? And then after a while, it came to me. I felt that God was saying that the wall... The wall is symbolic of the church. I thought, oh, good. I'm starting to get somewhere. <laughs> the ball, the building, and what God's talking about is, is the church. I thought, great, the church, okay. Oh. Well, you know, then I thought, well, the wall was a bit of a rubble. <laughs> it was broken down in a lot of places. I thought, oh, mm, yeah, okay. Yeah, don't mean to be critical, God, but I think the church is a bit like that in some ways, aren't it? And I started to, to look at the story. And I thought, well, what are you gonna, you're going to build? You're going to build up, build up the church. Thought, wow, that's good God. You're going to build up the church. And so that got me thinking. I thought, oh, I'm starting to get somewhere now. You know, you, when you're preaching, you have these battles sometimes where you just get snippets and it's like you're trying to fight your way through the the jungle to try and find the little bit of gold that's there. You know? So I kept on fighting away and I'm thinking, okay, what I'll do, I'll, I'll go, how are you going to build up the church? What does that look like, God? And so I, I kept asking God the questions and it's really a good practice if you don't already do it, is to ask God questions. Ask Him questions and be patient and wait for the answers. Because they'll come. They'll really come. Sometimes you have a spiritual battle, like I do. So I, I, I looked at that and I thought, you're going to build up the church this year. You're going to start to build it up. And I was excited. So I, I said, Lord, what, what does that look like? Well, as I've already said, I felt God saying that it's not going to happen instantly. It's going to turn around slowly. But then it's going to come to a point where it begins to ramp up. It's going to, you're going to get to that point and then it's going to be exponential. It's going to be unstoppable. And it, it, won't, it made me think of the floods. Some of those people are still struggling with floods, aren't they? The, the Murray is still and others are still sort of gaining height and flowing into places. And it's, but it's just going to gradually come. And then it's going to rise up and become a tsunami, what God does. As we respond to him, as the church throws herself down at Jesus' feet, not looking to anything else but him, then we're going to start to see this tsunami of God moving. And it's going to happen this year. It's going to start to happen. In fact, it's already starting, I, I, I believe. So I thought, well, we better have a look and see what, what Nehemiah went through. So Nehemiah chapter 1 is where we began to start. And I thought, wow, here's that part where, verse 3, where the survivors who are, who are really struggling in, 
the province around Jerusalem and in the old city in chapter 1, they come to Nehemiah and they, and they say to him, because he, he's dying to know what's happening. I wonder if God was already at work in his heart. Maybe he was, hey? Maybe he was. And so they say, look, the gates are broken down, verse 3, the gates are broken down and have been burned with fire. The place is a mess, in other words, they're saying. It's a wreck. Nothing's been done to it to grow it. We're not going forward at all. It sounds a bit familiar, doesn't it? We're not going forward. And what it does then is it just moves his heart. And I, and I thought about that and I thought, well, we need to have our hearts moved, don't we? We need our hearts moved for the things of God. So many things around about us we just overlook. But we need God to move our hearts. And maybe for you this year, God's going to move your heart for something specific that he wants you to be involved in. Maybe that's for you. But Nehemiah's heart was moved and I thought, oh God, move our hearts. Take us out of our, our dullness. Take us out of our comfortability, God. As scary a prayer as that is to pray. And what it does, it moves him into intercession. You can see that, doesn't it? It moves him into intercession. And that's, that's the first thing to do. Prayer and fasting changes things. I know some of you know that. But if you've got something that's not shifting, pray and fast. As, as much as I hate fasting, pray and fast. <laughs> because that's what will change things. Whether it's family, your job, whatever it, whatever it might be, pray and fast. Because it will change things. This year we'll need to pray and fast. I, I, I almost the other day, it's so funny, almost thought, oh God, I hope I don't have to fast too much this year. <laughs> but then I knew what the answer was. <laughs> I knew. Because it, it breaks down the spiritual atmosphere around about. It, it puts the frights up the demons and everything else that's trying to come in front of God's purposes. I thought, wow, we're going to have to keep doing that this year, God. But not just bless me prayers. They've got to be passionate. Look at Nehemiah. They've got to be passionate prayers. We've got to say to God when we pray, Lord, show me how to pray. How to pray in the Spirit. My old Pentecostal grandmother used to say to me, pray in the Spirit, Paul. She'd admonish me if I just prayed, bless me, prayers. She'd say, pray in the Spirit. I've got to pray in the Spirit. And if you haven't got a prayer in the Spirit, pray in tongues, pray in the Spirit. And ask God to rend your heart. Ask Him to, to really rend your heart. Because as you look through the Bible, it's those prayers that are that have moved heaven. So I thought that was it. I thought, well, yeah, that's certainly got to be got to be part of it, God. It really got to be, hasn't it? But it goes a bit deeper for Nehemiah, doesn't it? Because he gets to this point where he prays this this prayer of, of like repentance, in verse five and six and seven, all the way through. Lord, we've sinned terribly. He says, I pray before you day and night for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess, verse 6, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you, both my father's house and I have sinned. There's not going to be a, a move of God, is there, unless there's repentance, unless our hearts are so moved you know, it's godly sorrow, repentance, isn't it? It's about godly sorrow. It's something that's moved so deeply in our hearts that it changes the way we think and the way we behave. That's what's got to fall upon the church now. And even in our own hearts, repentance has got to, got to be the thing that we see God moving in. Well, let's move on quickly. It's um, 
we see that, I saw anyway, I should say, that God's plans had been put in place. Look at Nehemiah. He's, he's there. He's in this wonderful high leadership spot, the cupbearer. You know, the cupbearer was like a confidant to the king. The king would share his stuff with him. And it was a very, very trusted position, wasn't it? I mean, if the wine was, was poisoned, well, bye-bye cupbearer. That was, that was it. Ring up tuckers and whatever, that's it. But, you know, he was, he was a confidant of the king. And God has got his plan in place already, way, way before. Not surprising, is it? It's what God does. For some of you this year, I, I believe, that God's going to have his plan in place for you before, before you even realise it. He's got some special plans for you this year that he's been working on and putting all the little pins and dots and everything else in place for you and me this year. We're going we're gonna to see change that we didn't expect. We really are. And this is why we need to be so close to God to understand what's going on. Because we can, we'll see things in the natural that we, of ourselves, we'll just automatically go, oh, no, that can't be right, or I couldn't do that, or that's whatever. We'll see things in the natural because God's going to surprise us in some places and we'll have to wait and we'll have to look. See, God doesn't mind waiting, does he? He, he must have waited a while to get Nehemiah into place to make him the cupbearer and to get the heart of the king for, for Jerusalem and the wall. God doesn't mind waiting. Read Isaiah 30. It says that God shall wait that he may be gracious to you. It says in Isaiah 30. I think it's verse 15, I think. God will wait that he may be gracious to you. And God wants to be gracious to us this year. We're going to see his graciousness. We're going to see him work in ways that will, will be surprises because there will be others around us that God's already got in place to help us move where he wants us to move and do what he wants us to do. It'll be so important to have a heart of others, a heart for others to come around us. Individualism is, is a, it's a walk into trouble. It really is. That's for sure. God's plans. Don't, don't rush. Don't rush. Don't rush this year. When you see stuff happening and you don't understand, Wait on the Lord. Don't rush. Resist rushing. Okay? Sometimes I get stuff, and I'm sure you're the same, and we're just, oh, yes, God, I think that's you. Let's go for it. Yeah. And sometimes we're not sure, but in either way, we have to wait and don't rush. It's, again, it's the simple things of waiting on God. And trust, and trust leaders. I, I want to encourage you to trust leadership, not just because of me. I just want to encourage you to trust leadership. Okay? There, there is a, an attack on leaders, I know, a spiritual attack on leaders that's happening all over. I guarantee if I, I got pastors from around here, they would agree. There's been an attack on health and all sorts of attacks that are coming against leadership. And that's because God, why? Because God uses leadership. All throughout the Bible, God uses leadership, doesn't he? And it's not because of control. It's because of godly order. It's because of guidance. It's because of love and wisdom that needs to be brought into certain situations and into God's church. Trust leadership. If you can, trust leadership. Because I, I learned the hard way years ago that God especially talks to leaders about his church. And we can trust that. We can trust that. Okay. Um, there's a verse there that if you want to, we haven't got time at the moment to read it. It's Hebrews 10, 35 and 36. And I think we're going to look at that verse later on in the year. So let's quickly move on. God's favour. Nehemiah gets God's favour. Do you see that there? He goes into chapter 2. And he gets to the king and, and he's, still, he's still cut up by this burden of, of Jerusalem being a mess and going nowhere. 
and he's sorrowful. And you weren't supposed to be sorrowful in front of the king. Where, where they were at this time was in Shushan. And this is the city where they were in at the moment. That was the winter city, the city where the, the leaders and the kings would go to, to have their summer break, okay? As far as history tells us. And this is about 446 BC. And in that particular setup there, the, the cupbearer was never meant to be sad. He's, he's got to put on, he's got to fake it till he makes it. He's, he's got to put on a happy face. Otherwise, it, it could mean death. The king wouldn't be happy if the cupbearer was a morbid depressive. Like, that's it. Get out of here. And so Nehemiah is a bit fearful, as you can see from verse 3. And he, and he, oh, may the king live forever. Why should my face be sad, he goes. But when the city lets it out, and the city, he can't help himself. The place of my father's tombs lies waste, and its gates are burned with fire. It just overcomes him. The heart that he has, the burden God's put on him. And then the king goes, what's your request? Whew. There it was. I wonder, I wonder how strong his faith was to, to believe. You know, This year, there's going to be times when you're going to have to say to God, well, this is my request, God. You know, What are you expecting from God this year? What do you want to ask him? I believe in some areas God will be saying to you, what's your request? What's your request? And if you hear him, declare it out. Declare it over your family. Declare it over your own heart. Lord, I want to be different. Whatever it is, declare it out. He gets his request. And the, and the king gives him such favour. You know, there was a time last year when I, 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 the Lord was showing me this. And in the midst of all the tough stuff last year, there was this little blink of a month or two, I think, where... Everything was just God's favour. I hardly had to do a thing. And it all just went boop, 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 boop. And I was just floating. Oh, God, thank you. May it be like this forever. <laughs> but God was just showing me something. And we are, we are going to see God's favour come upon us. In the midst of darkness, in the midst of struggle or trial, we are going to see God's favour. If we're wanting to walk in His plans, that is. And purposes. You know, that's the caveat. If we're really desiring to do that, we're going to see God's favour fall upon us, even from places we wouldn't expect. Even from there. You know, you're sitting here about my driveway. <laughs> I'm watching for your eyes to disclose that. <laughs> but you know what? I didn't pay a cent for any of that. I didn't pay a cent for part of the works that were all done. It was thousands of dollars to get stuff done. The school paid for it all. Everything. School paid for the documents, all that sort of stuff. We're going to see favour come upon us this year. Believe for it. Expect it. Don't go in thinking, oh, how's this going to work? Expect God's favour to come upon what he's calling you to do. Expect it. I'll tell you, you'll see it. You'll see it. If you're in his will. If you're in his will. Well, he saw God's favour. Okay, let's move, let's move on. But he also, he went out sent with God's authority. Didn't he? He had the letters. He could go to all the governors in the area, the regions. They were, they were the power brokers of the regions. And, and the king gives him letters to go to all of those power brokers in the, in the area and say... <laughs> I'm sure he was humble. I'm sure he wasn't giggling, but, you know, hey guys, the king's told me I can do this. The king's allowed me. He's empowered me. He's even given me all the stuff I need to come and build the wall. All the help I need. And here we are. He went with authority. You know what? I, I believe one of the things that's going to build and build and build this year in the church is that we are going to walk not in earthly kingly authority, but in Kingly, King Jesus authority. We're going to grow in King Jesus authority in this year. I believe that's going to happen. We're going to start to do that. We're going to need to do some teaching on it. Maybe refresh our minds because a lot of us have heard a lot of teaching 
over the years. <laughs> Who's been in church for over 50 years? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good ideas. It's pretty good. <clears throat> but we're going to need to grow in, in walking. Maybe grow once again for some of us in walking in authority. Kind of authority that, that the disciples walked in. Why not? Why not? Grabbed him by the hands, didn't he, Peter? He says, rise up and walk. I believe it's going to get to that. I hope it's our generation, but it might end up being the younger ones, which we know God's raising up at the moment. We're going to walk in power. But we're going to walk in authority, fearless, because, because we know who we are in Jesus. We've begun to really accept who we are in Jesus. That's the, that's the issue. A lot of the issue is that we haven't accepted who we are. We know the verses, we know the scriptures, we can say them, but we haven't accepted who we are properly, deep into our being. We just believe it, but we haven't received it. And this is going to happen now, in the days ahead, I'm, I'm so sure. This this church that God is building up. He's building up the church. Yeah. Building up the church. So I, was, uh, I got to it yesterday and I thought, this is all good, God, but I'm, I'm not happy. I, I, I thought there's something more about this wall. Um, I thought, even though the story seems to be all about the wall, and all those good things uh, that Nehemiah, and it is about all those things that Nehemiah has put there, I thought, what, what's our part that we, we do in building up the church? You know, God will build his church, but he'll do it through us. He does sovereign work, of course, but he'll do it through us. It's always been that way. And I thought, what's the simple thing that we can take away about building up the church? And I thought, the, the story's about the wall, but it's also, oh, I suddenly got it. It's, it's about the people, isn't it? No people, no wall. <laughs> no people, nothing would have happened. We, we focus on that mind picture of the wall, and it's a good one. It's fantastic. But sometimes we forget about the people that had to do it. You know, it, it was a miracle that even the Jews would even work together to build that wall, you know? Look at history. Think about AD 70. They reckon most of the casualties were caused by the Jews fighting against themselves. <laughs> it was a miracle that they built that wall. God worked in the people. The people worked alongside each other, didn't they? They supported each other. They were there for each other, no doubt. And when the persecution comes, what did they do? The, the trail in one hand, didn't they? And the sword in the other. And they supported each other, even to the death. They were willing to go to the death. It was about the people. And you know, when we're building up the church, the first simple foundational thing that we've got to grab hold of right now Right now, I can feel my spirit lighting up as I say it. Right now is that we build each other up in the church. Right now. We come and we build up the person beside us, the, the one that we're not even sure about, the one we don't even like that much, but we, we're there to build up the church and build up each other. That's what God is wanting for us to do this year. And you know, if we don't do it, we're going to be in danger of, of being like, if you read on Nehemiah a bit further, we're going to be in danger of being like the rubble that was at the bottom of the wall. I've forgotten which um, chapter it's in, but at one point the, the workers come back to Nehemiah and say, it's too hard, mate. There's rubble everywhere. And we can't clear it. And, and we're struggling. The rubble. We, if we don't do this, we will end up like slipping into being rubble that's an obstacle to God's purposes. Not a vehicle, a blessing. You know, we're, we're, 
we're a bit in danger of slipping here in Basel a little bit. You know? There's talk been going on. And I want to say to you before God, if you want this church to, to rise up in revival, and to affect the city, get on your knees and say, Lord, save us. Save us from tearing each other down. Save us. It's time to listen to God. It's time to build up. Look at these verses from the Apostle Paul. So even, 2 Corinthians 10, 8. So even if I boast somewhat freely about the authority I have, authority the Lord gave us for building you up rather than tearing you down, I will not be ashamed of it. Catch that. Catch that. Read it again. To the Corinthians, who had, you know, their church had really stuffed up in lots of ways. But he says, I'm not going to be ashamed of the fact that I want to build you up. This is the Apostle Paul. He, he could have said so much else, couldn't he, to them. But I'm not ashamed of it. You see, we're called to build each other. Let's look at another verse. This is why I write these things when I am absent. That when I come, I may not have to be harsh in my use of authority. The authority the Lord gave me for building you up, not for tearing you down. <coughs> Isn't that awesome? He's saying, I didn't want to have to come and be harsh with you. I didn't want to have to, to be like that. Because I want to build you up. I don't want to tear you down. This is the Apostle Paul. Shouldn't it speak so much to our hearts? Shouldn't it? It should get us moving. We don't need to be harsh when we see people's weaknesses or their faults or their failings. We don't want to be harsh. We don't want to speak with our lips things that could be like curses. Because the enemy jumps on words Makes them, gives him a foothold, doesn't it? I don't want to do that. Last verse. I'm just about done. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Oh, sorry, Ephesians 4.29. Come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. <laughs> Oh boy, what a verse. I pray that you will and I will take hold of these verses, that they'll stick in your mind. I want the Holy Spirit to, to put such weight on those verses that they'll be planted in our hearts and our minds. Whenever we're with somebody who starts to talk about someone in the church or whatever's going on or use words that isn't building up. Because God wants to build up the church and he wants to use us to help do it. I hope you agree. I hope you want to be a vessel. And I want to be a vessel. I really want to be a vessel where God can use us to encourage, to strengthen, to, to not focus on people's faults. It doesn't mean we're weak on sin. It's just that we're not sin conscious when we look at people. We're not, we're not pulling them down in our minds because we see all the things they don't do right or the things that they don't agree with, with us. We're looking upon them as Jesus looks upon them, to raise them up, to shine His glory and His love and His grace, His incredible grace that He's shown each one of us. It's incredible grace. And so how we need to show it to each other. This is what will bring the church into a place where the power of God will flow upon us. This is what will bring a, a, an example to young people to rise up in a prayer 
and be great intercessors and prayers for this next generation. This will be the example from us. It's got to come from, it can't come from us. Golly, it's got to come from us. We've been in the faith a long time, haven't we? We've got to do it. We've got to model it. I'm sorry if it sounds simple to you, but it's not. It's very powerful. It's part of those foundational bearers that God is setting and making strong so that the church can weather in him all that the world is going to throw at us. This is what God is doing. Would you, would you mind, I know you're comfortable, would you mind to stand for a second as we finish now? Stretch and groan if you want to. That's all right. <laughs> because I'm just going to ask you, you don't have to, I'm just going to pray a prayer. You can join with me if you want to. I'm just going to pray a prayer. That, um, and then we're going to finish with the last verse. Oh, I'll finish with the verse first. So in Nehemiah 2 verse 20, um, this is what he says. All the people have been against him. And he says, So I answered them and said to them, The God of heaven himself will prosper us. Hallelujah. Therefore we, his servants, will arise and build. And he tells them that they have no, no right to interfere in what's going on. The enemy has no right to interfere. The God of heaven himself will prosper. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. Do you agree? Yes. Are you, do you want to arise and build the church? I hope you do. I'm sure you do. And so, Lord, we pray, like Nehemiah, that you would forgive us for where we have said things, grumbled, looked at others in condescending ways, where we've been prideful and thinking we've got it right, Lord, in, a, in all of those ways where we haven't built up the church, Lord, we confess those things to you now. And we say, Holy Spirit, come. Please come. Blood of Jesus, please come. Wash us clean. Wash us clean completely. We repent, Lord. And we ask that you would change our hearts and change our thinking. And not just for here, Lord, we pray also for your church all over Geelong. That the church of Geelong might really know what it is to be the one church in the city under Jesus Christ. Full of grace and mercy towards each other. Full of love. Oh God, I thank you from this moment on for changing us. Lord, we would pray that miraculously you would change us. And Lord, even slowly, whatever way, Lord, change us. And raise us up, Lord. Raise us up. In the beauty of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing your wonderful work that only you can do. Only you can do this, Lord. Praise you, God. Empower each one of us to change. And we pray it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Amen.